So I, I'm fine with talking about this right now. But we can talk about it. If we, if we, yeah. Welcome to the Perspective Podcast, Joe Sway here. As most of you guys probably already know, from the Democratic Republic of Congo, I attended the Oral Roberts University. Um, I preach at times, but that's not really something we frequently talk about here on this page. Um, to my right, we actually have another famous guest who's been here with us for a long time. It's a reoccurring person, Chase Brown. Uh, he was born in Texas. He attended the university of North Texas. Uh, he's an aspiring philanthropic creative. And it is m March, right? March 12th. Um, the temperature's starting to change a little bit, so you know he got his sandals back and he's ready for that very long walk on the beach. Why that is, we're going to get into that today. Chase Brown, how you doing? Yeah, I'm doing really good, man. Yeah, you good, bro? Yeah, we just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we just firing off hot takes already. Uh -huh. We just, yeah, we just hear. That's the normal intro. What's yeah, going yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm yeah. surprised you oh, remembered you it. the other conversation. Been, I got yeah, you. I got yeah, you. Yeah, 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 yeah. All, all the things. But no, I've been really good. Just got back from L.A. Yeah. Unfortunately, did not go to the beach because mm. of uh, unforeseen circumstances um, that we will not talk about for on sure, this conversation. Sure. Um, but yeah, I'm doing really good, man. Yeah. I'm doing really good. It's been a good start to the year. Life is good. Um, the launch of letters from love itself has been absolutely surreal mm. in many ways. And it's been a lot of fun to be able to see the friends, like be encouraged by it. Um, like Thomas's wife, Angelica be involved mm -hmm. in the project. One of her poems be in the book, mm. Jalen being in it, mm -hmm. you and your wife, hopefully being in volume two mm. to be released next year. Mm -hmm. They're praying into it as the Christians do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing good. Pray. Yeah. <laughs> always, always always. Gotta pray. yeah. Yeah. How you doing, bro? Yeah. I'm good, man. Um, just, <clears throat> I think the the temperature's starting to change, you know, so I'm I'm finally glad we don't have to deal with the cold anymore. Um, I haven't taken any trips, but I have a lot of weddings coming up, so kind of getting ready for that. Maybe going to Mexico here oh, in May, so come on. that should be fun. Yeah, that should be a good time. But as you guys already know, whenever we have a video, you already know there's a special guest. We're not here to talk about me, you know, we're not here to do that. Um, our guests we've been trying to bring on the podcast probably the last five years that I'm losing track. <laughs> yeah, he, um, he, he only comes on in group yeah, settings, yeah. but we finally got him on just himself. Yeah, he's been ducking us for the last four years, I would say at least. But it's understandable when you're a big pillar and staple within the Fort Worth community, exactly. it only makes sense that your time is really valuable. Exactly. Man. Um, soon to be five-time Grammy award-winning mm -hmm. um, artist. Um, Four-time he was nominated uh, Fort Worth Influencer of the Year. Mm -hmm. um, three times. Most fashionable men oh, yeah. in Fort Worth. Yeah, most yeah. fashionable men in, in yeah. definitely in Fort okay. Worth. Um, two times. Let's go with... Um, Mercy mm. Culture Worship Leader of the oh, Year. Yeah, who's yeah. The most humble. Back to back. Back Shout to back. To the Lord. Yeah, he, he's like the um, Kansas City Chiefs, you know, back to back. Uh, yeah, he won that yeah. award two times going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then one time, you know, I just, you know, he's a child of God. He loves God. He loves people. Uh, he loves having a good time. And so we're, we're, we're glad and fortunate. We're fortunate to have him sit here among us. So, ladies and gentlemen, get your hands together for Mr. <laughs> Jalen himself here in the building. I with us. Cannot, yeah. bro. Oh, man. <laughs> What an honor. What an honor. You're here. What an honor to be seated next in between two princes royalty. This is wow. amazing. Wow. Wow. Um, wow. I, need, is... I needed that. Yeah. After these last couple days, I needed yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, man. You know, How you I, been, bro? Man, I've been good. You know, finally. working. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that intro uh, took me out. Oh, my bad. Um, yeah. You know, after... Five years, as you said, five years. Yeah, five working years. up the courage to just yeah. be seated in the midst of you guys. It's mm. been, you know, when, whenever, imaginable. Whenever a guy gets a girlfriend, you know, just crazy things happen. <laughs> yeah. He gets so much courage. It's wild. He's like, yeah. I can, I can defeat the world. Yeah. I can conquer the world. Mm -hmm. Wow, and that's and you do that without one. So this, I can <laughs> only imagine. Okay, now, okay, now shots are fired for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Wow, when you get like, when he get his, y'all, he's gonna <sighs> skyrocket. So. Yeah. 
if anything, Watch you better out. get them while you can. <laughs> Watch <laughs> out. <laughs> Lord, keep me humble, please. Oh, Ooh, hallelujah. Man. I but need yeah, your help. Thank y'all for letting me be on this podcast. Yeah. Uh, I love you guys. I love what you guys are doing. And um, if anything I have to offer is just being here. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But back to the question, though. How you mm. been? You shared a little bit. We want to see what's how been, been walking through. How you been? Um, you know, just trying to be a thriving child of God out here in the streets. Currently mm. in a new relationship, Congrats. which is you know, yes. which is different. It was not on my bingo card. Shout but out I'm Bella. glad that yeah, shout out Bella, yeah. my girl. Um, was not on bingo card. You know, I guess it took me to go across the pond to find somebody. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> you, got, you got yourself a... Uh, my accents are terrible. Forgive me. Yo, I'm you, trash You got yourself a London girl. You know, a London... A London... Mm-hmm. London, a London girl. Thing. Yeah, I am horrible with accents. Somehow it goes to, like, this Jamaican... Yeah. Jamaican, African yeah. type of thing. I think it's my roots. Um, amen. Uh, but, yeah, that's been good. Learning what... To enjoy relationship... Um, getting and pursuing one another, uh, but also realizing that areas of my heart has just been sleep. So mm. that's been very mm. interesting mm. Um, and been fun um, to process. And then currently I am on like a whole nine month sabbatical right mm. now, like worship really? and resting. Yeah. We haven't talked about this. Oh, yeah, oh. we haven't caught up. It's been a while. Look at you. You've kept a secret. <laughs> Mr. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> This is good. What, 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 like, what do they say? Don't let people fa- know when you're fasting, I guess. Don't let people know when you're sabbaticaling either. I, I, I guess so. Yeah. You know, let's just be revealed. I thought you said don't let people know when you're fat. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I heard that too. <laughs> yeah, I, said, I was like, wow. wow. That's new. I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> wow. I did not say that. <laughs> wow. Not say that. No. <laughs> yeah. no, but yeah, that's been, it's been, I think it's two months in. And so, well, it's the beginning of two months in. And so, it's been a crazy ride already. Yeah. So, it's a whole nine months. Is that something you're able to talk about or is it a secret? If you're um, not completely understand. I, I yeah, did bring it up on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll share it. I'll share okay. now. With yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can. I can ask a go. question if you. Would, um, so you say two months into the sabbatical. Um, yeah. Typically, somebody may say, "What's a sabbatical?" You know, mm-hmm. like why? As you know, we we say that you were a worship leader. Um, why is this, as a worship leader you even need? A sabbatical, like how do you kind of get into all that? Yeah, so I know for for me it wasn't again not on my radar. Um, usually, when somebody asks like what a sabbatical is, like a rest. Um, I know sometimes pastors take them for like a month, two, three. Hmm. Um, I don't know however long. If you if you have a longer sabbatical, man, God loves you with giving you nine months. Dang. You know, mm, that was not on my plan. So <laughs> it was the beginning of the month, uh, beginning of the year. Actually, I was uh, at my work. I was working. Um, and then I was listening to this like podcast of this guy. He was talking about covenants of prayer, James Kaluuya. And I'm listening to this message and I just thought, you know, um, I was just start praying. I was asking the Lord, like, Lord, what are you, what are you saying about this year? Um, and I have, I always keep like a notepad or a paper near me so I can just randomly write what comes to mind. Um, because you know, as a Christian, you know, we're filled with the spirit and we get to talk to him every day, all day. Um, not the White Sox. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's but that was an audio. <laughs> <laughs> Cross oh, the leg, I got the White Sox on. Yeah. Um, but when I was praying, um, the question came to me, will, um, will you commit this year to intercession? And I was like, yeah, I love praying. Um, but I always have felt over the, like, over the past nine months as of recently, uh, last year, this call to deeper intercession with the Lord and, and sitting with him and asking what's on his heart and continuing um, in that space. And so for that question to come up at the beginning of this year was pretty like on track with what I've been feeling in my spirit. And so I was like, yeah, sure. I can, I can commit this year to intercession by all means, no problem. Um, and then uh, I saw nine months right after that. And I was like, nine months, what is that? So I just kept working and kept praying and, and worshiping, and and one of the questions the Lord asked me was like, will you, um, for nine months, come off the platform, ministering from platform publicly, and only minister to me in private? And so, and I was like, what? And it was this random question that really hit me, and my spirit said yes before I could say yes, and I was like, sure, I will do this. 
And um, so I said, yes, Lord, I will not minister from platform for nine months and I will minister to you in private. So that's kind of where the consecration piece comes yeah. from. So then something I know that I would feel at that point is that I'm letting down the people that I'm serving with oh, man. or the people that I'm worshiping with. Yeah. So how did you feel that? And if so, how did you fight that? So when I say yes to the Lord, literally immediately after that, I felt that. I felt those feelings like, this is the wrong time to do it. Our, our, our lead worshiper, our lead pastor, she's pregnant at the time. We have three people on the team that are pregnant that have just had kids. And so I'm like, this is the most inopportune time for me to, to do this, you know? And so my flesh was like, no, oh, Jalen, I don't think it's a wise decision. Like, I don't know. And then I had to go back to, like, what did the Lord say? Um, what, because this something, this was nothing that you, thought of, you know, this was not in your heart. And if it's your heart's desire, you'll stay up there and, and help serve them in, in, in what capacity you can. Um, and it was, I think I was, I was reading the scripture and it says like your yes be yes and your no be no. I think something like that. I don't want to. Well, no, that's right. Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah. He, he's the, he's the Bible knower. Hallelujah. That's that's gotta have somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> oh no! That look was for some people out there. Yeah, you gotta have somebody checking. Well, well, yeah, we'll, we'll let the spirit convict um, on with that. Um, and so one of the, so I was like, okay, like Lori, I say yes to you, however this looks. And um, I'm what I did. One thing I love about my community, the community I'm part of, is that we, um, we. We lean into authenticity and being able to share thoughts that come up. And so I knew that if I keep these thoughts in my mind about them, me disappointing them, it's just going to eat at me. And so um, I just asked the Lord, I said, hey, who do I need to tell next about this next step? And how do I go about it? What questions do I ask? Or what do I say to them? And so I text my brother, Dan, and I was like, hey, I got to talk to you about something. Let's meet up pretty soon. He was quick about it. And we met next. And I was like, hey, this is what I felt the Lord was saying in this season. And these are the lies and these are the thoughts that are coming to me. Um, and he was just like, no, bro. Like, I don't know where you got that from. Like, we, you're not going to be a nuisance. Like, if the Lord is asking you to do this, like, we're fully with you. Like, um, God bless you. And so it was kind of my, it was kind of my, my, my heart to keep it under wraps. And so when he asked me, the next following week was my last week to lead in front of, for, for, for church and everything like that for a while. Um, and it happened to be like my pastor, he was up and I told him ahead of time, I, I, Hey, this is what the Lord's calling me into. It's going to be my last Sunday. Um, he's like, okay, I feel good on that. Obey the Lord. And I said, okay, great. So I'm like, all right, cool. I haven't told my team yet. Like, I'm like, maybe I'll tell them like mid service. Cause we have two services and <laughs> I was talking to my, uh, my pastor and she's like, Hey, like, let's wait till the team night and we'll tell, we'll tell the whole team and you just bring them on, bring them along this journey with you. And I was like, okay, great. And then an altar call comes and my pastor felt the Lord on it. And he's like, and he just announced it to the whole church. And I was like, Oh, all right. Um, yeah, there they go. And so, um, after that, it was like the Lord was like, I had, I had to do it that way. And now I'm seeing why it's because it's like this, it's like this big stamp of like accountability, you mm -hmm. know, for me, Cause I'm like, I'm such a, like, I want to help and serve. And so if no one knew, then other people probably would be like, Oh, I didn't know he was on sabbatical. He said yes to this. Or he said no to this, but yeah. everybody knows now they're like, Hey, like, no, like you're, <laughs> you're in the season where the Lord's asking you to kind of step back, um, do it. And so it's been, it's been so helpful. Uh, and just the prayers that have been coming, like, I don't know what this nine months is about. I'm like, I don't know either, but it's, it's been crazy. And, um, I know it's unto something and I'm, I'm excited for it. So it's kind of where I've been. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, <clears throat> and I think even just, uh, something that you pointed at and you mentioned <laughs> that, you know, this was something that you, as you said, you heard from the Lord as you were praying and at work and just kind of doing that. Uh, you said, you know, we could talk to him every day. You know, that's what you said, you know, um, made that comment, <laughs> you know, you said that. Um, so how, how does that, how was that brought about? How was that developed? You know, somebody may say, you know, I want to be able to hear the Lord with such certainty, you know, um, I, I have things that come to mind. I don't know how to differentiate if it's the bad pizza or, or you good. know, yeah. Uh, how do we kind of go about dif differentiating the voice, you know, of the Lord and if it's just myself? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I know for me that it, I remember growing up being younger um, and hearing my grandparents talk about it all the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, sure. You hit the Lord all the time. You talk to him every day. Like, he has something to say every day. I'm like, yeah. Like, I, I didn't believe it. Like, I, it just, I thought it was something that Christians said. Um, and that they picked what they wanted to, to hear the Lord on and made you do it because of what they wanted. And um, as I got older, I think it really started to take shift in my life. I would say about five years ago, five, six years ago. Um, when I came to Mercy Culture, and in the the thing is the the value and and the and the mission is like from corporate encounters to daily personal encounters, and so um, one of the things that I realized that I didn't have in my life was daily encounters with Him, um, which opened the door to many many of my prayers. And one being, I just want to be around Him more. Um, to like Lord, I want I, there was things in my life that I needed freedom from that was not being accessed because I wasn't being around him um, daily. Like, I was doing it, like, once or twice a week or three times a week. Um, and then even getting in his word. And so one of the things that I would always I always hear my grandmother in the back, she said, she would always say, if you want to hear the Lord speak, read the word. And, Amen. and I'm like, really? Because I grew up with King James Version. <clears throat> So it's kind of hard reading the word, like, thee, thy, thou, you know. Um, and sometimes it still comes out at times, which is beautiful, you know. Um, but I think um, as I've walked with the Lord all these past few years, um, just making the priority to encounter him every day, what it looks like. Maybe one day may look different from the next and realizing that it's okay. Uh, one day maybe being able to sit in his presence and not even say anything, uh, just allow him to pour his love on you. Another day may be um, prayer, you know, um, petitioning. Um, other day may just be him asking you, uh, it may be um, a first thought that you wake up in the morning and you're just like, why do I feel this urge to like go for a walk this morning? Um, it could be the Holy Spirit. Um, and the question is like, if it's the Holy Spirit, you know, if you obey that, what would happen? Um, what will you lose if you go for a walk that morning? Um, and, and so it was just like the little nudges of things over time like that. Hey, like go for a walk. Hey, stay here for a moment. You know, Hey, pray for this person to make came in mind uh, one time. Um, and one situation happened where um, I was, I was at work and all of a sudden I felt anxiety. I really don't, at this season, I really didn't really deal with anxiety that much, but it just came, it overcame me a lot. Um, and I was like, Whoa, this this came out of nowhere. I'm not, nothing on, like, there was no onset to this. Nothing caused this. What is this? And um, oh, I thought the Holy Spirit was like, hey, like, this is someone else. And I was like, okay. So I just started praying. And literally, my friend's name popped up in my spirit. Um, someone said, like in their mind, in my mind as well. I saw his name. Like, I literally, you know, you think about something, I see his name. And I was like, Okay, so I just start praying. I literally start praying. I'm like, I'm crying. I, I'm like, what is happening? Am I getting delivered or something? I don't know what's going on. Um, all of a sudden, it just, I feel like it kind of like lifts. So I felt peace after praying. I go to my desk. Um, I text him, and I was like, hey, I don't know what's going on, but I'm thinking about you. You're on my mind. You're on my spirit. Um, I'm praying for you. Literally, he texts back. He's like, bro. I needed this because I'm going through like this anxiety attack. And I was just like, thank you, Holy Spirit. Like I would have never known um, of that if it wasn't for his presence. Um, and so, yeah, there may be little nudgings of the Holy Spirit. Like I, there's a scripture where it talks about um, he'll be like a whisper behind you and telling you this is the way walk in it. This is the way walk in it. And that's how I see relationship with the Holy Spirit is that he's there sometimes in the, the finest whisper. Um, just asking you, nudging you to go this way or go that way or maybe sit or stay. So it's kind of how it's kind of cultivated with me over time. Yeah. And especially with me over the last couple of years as I've been prioritizing like daily times with the Lord as well, mm -hmm. I've seen in my own life, whether it's like shown itself externally or not, like I've seen the Lord speak so much more. And even this morning I was going back and trying to put, I do this from time to time, like put in like concise pages in my journal like all right what are the big things that the lord spoke over the last like two three months to because i think in the daily grind of life we can forget how much the lord does speak and the thought can trickle in of like dang i haven't heard the lord say something super major in like 
months. Like, what is going on? Like, I, I'm just, I'm so lost in everything that we forget all these like big things. And then even going back helps us like steward those things and carry those things in it. One of the things that I wanted to be like vulnerable in, in this to like present this kind of question to like both of y'all to like answer or share your own testimonies with it or whatever is uh, whenever it comes to in line with this, like prophetic words or things like that, that are, that come out during church services. Mm -hmm. I see a lot of times at various churches that I, that I go to um, throughout the country and even in other countries, this like, oh, there's something prophetic that the Lord's saying every single week. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, for me, I don't know if it's something I need to grow in or something that the Lord's showing me or what, but I'm just like, I don't see that as something that I see in the Bible. That is just like, I, I don't think that all of Isaiah's 66, whatever books and prophecies were given to him in like sequential weeks. I'm like, I'm sure this was probably over the course of like his life. And I'm like, it, it, it makes me question if we receive something on a routine, is it truly something that's of the Lord or are we like forcing something? Is it just a routine that we're going through? Or what? And so I don't, I, I don't know if y'all thought of that, but in the event that y'all had thought of it, um, I wanted to like give y'all the opportunity just to kind of speak into that, like for my own encouragement, correction, anything like that. So I don't mm. know if y'all have thoughts on it. Yeah. yeah I mean, I, th I think there's like, there's the aspect of, um, and sorry, as you're thinking, the reason why I brought this up is because I think something that I'm struggling with believing from time to time is like the Lord is always speaking. Cause I'm like, oh, like I don't looking back to like scripture. I'm like, uh, I could see, I could see where some people say that, but at the same time, it didn't seem like the practice that was in the Bible. So that, that was, that was a connection that made me go there. So I'm sorry. Let's yeah. Go ahead, bud. Yeah. I mean, I think there's like the, um, what is it? <laughs> speaking in the sense of like, like you said, like your, you said your grandma said is, am I reading scripture and I'm getting understanding? Is, yeah. That's the Lord speaking, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, or, you know, to your question, is it um, like a prophetic word almost or something that somebody receives that they, <clears throat> you know, believe is for somebody or for a collective group of people? Um, I, I, I don't know if there's like how that works sequentially, but, you know, looking at the book of, Acts or even, um, you know, you look at Corinthians and how the model of like church and how it was set up, you know, uh, Paul said, if someone's going to prophesy, let them do it until the next person gets something and then the next person gets something. Now, is that every single service, every time we get together that the Lord is prophesying or the Lord is speaking through somebody in that kind of way? Um, that, you know, I'm not sure, yeah. but scripture from because obviously there's a camp that believes that those things are not present today and then there's a camp that um believe that those things are today and so <clears throat> if you are part of the camp that believes that it's for today i think there has to be a level of mindfulness um and, and carefulness in sharing the things that we do share you know and i'll give an example because i went to a private christian school and it was one of those environments where um, the infamous God told me you're my spouse mm. kind of thing. Yeah. You know, those, the only time God talked to them was about their spouse. Yeah. You know, I had this dream. It wasn't just having the dream. It was, you know, I had a dream and we were married. Wow. And then you about the, your, your finances so, or stewarding your finances. Yeah. No, it's always about we're going we're gonna to get married type of dreams. And so um, so I think there, there has to be a level of mindfulness because... Yeah. Um, the more, <clears throat> you know, the more that I'm, I'm spending more time just getting in the word this year than I have in prior years, um, and having finished, uh, Romans and going through Corinthians right now, I see this issue, not an issue. I see this thing of where there are some Christians that are weak in their faith in the sense of like, maybe don't have faith for certain things, you know? Um, like Paul gives the issue of some people may consider one day holy 
And some people are like, every day is, you know, we don't have to like freak out and debate about this. Some people could say, you know, we can't eat certain things, um, you know, offered to idols. And then some people are like, well, it's just food. The earth, is, the earth is the Lord's and all his fullness. God made all things, so it's for our enjoyment. But some people may not have that faith to, to eat that. Like he's just giving an example of a modern day thing that they've went through. So in light of that, um, I think it is important for us to be mindful of who we're speaking with, of who is in the environment that the word is being given because some people will hold on to that word as you know, absolute truth. And in the case they don't see that word come true, you know, then everything else just crumbles. I'll give another example. It's those moments where you are in those church services and that get guest uh, speaker from far, far away comes and then he makes a proclamation. If you sow a seed for $1,000, you know, this is what God is going to do, you know, and then by faith, because you're believing what he said, because if he has the microphone, you're believing, you know, he's, and so you sow the seed, and then 10 years later, it's like, well, my finances keep going <laughs> the wrong way, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. So all that That's to real. say, I, I think there has to be a level of responsibility and mindfulness in, in the things that we do share, you know, if you are a part of the camp that, you know, believes those things, which I'm a part of, but I'm just, you know, learning to, um, be more mindful of others that may not see that as something that's present today. If that answers the question, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. You want to share? Yeah, um, I totally understand what you're saying. I think it's like, I think we are in a generation culture um, where people are seeking those things out. And some people are never satisfied with the last word. Mm. Um, I remember I went to one, I was at this one event and this prophet prophet came and um, it's like this guy, he was eager to get a word, Mm. eager to get a word. And um, and I felt like, it's like, is this faith or is it like something else, you know? And it it got me of like what the prophet said to him. He, and he's like, hey, you, I see that you're very expected. He's all I hear is what did the, what was the last thing God told you to yeah. do? What did he, what was the last thing he spoke to you? Mm-hmm. And, um, and I could tell that he, the boy looked disappointed. Mm. And I think it's, um, for me, I'm, I'm learning and I'm like, I'm asking the Lord to help me. And I'm like, Lord, I never want to cheapen what you say. Yeah. Like I never I always want to hold and steward, if this is your word, how do I steward it? Mm -hmm. Um, Whether I get it now, whether I get it six months from now, a year from now, whatever, I think that there's a a level to um, mindfulness that when you read the words, Mm -hmm. like some people at the time, they only got one word for a hundred years to yeah. steward one, yeah. just one. That's what Abraham, got. <laughs> Abraham. You know, he stayed on that word. He yeah. stayed on that one word. Yeah. And um, and there is a, a piece of me is like I'm getting all these words, and, and, and if they're all different, I'm like Lord, mm. is this even you? Like right. it's because it, it, it can bring confusion. Right. And if I know the character of God, mm. then I know that He is not of confusion. Mm. Um, but there are some times for me, I was like, "There's some words that I've get I've gotten over time that are the kind of repeat words. Mm-hmm. Like He reminds me of things along the way to bring me back to Him. Um, but there's a component I think of faith that I'm like, "Well, Lord, if can I believe if I'm crazy enough to believe that You can speak mm. in this manner to me? A lot of times." Hey, I may be. I don't yeah. know. There may be a, a level of faith with that. But also, in my, in my, I don't know if the word, if content, it may be the word or not, enough to, if you only speak this one word to me, will I be able to steward it and value it just as much as if you were to tell me every week? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's just a conviction of that and having the heart to be like, Lord, I want to steward this one word. If you, even, only if you even give me one word, like, let my faith not fail, my faith not stumble, even if it gets hard, that I will steward it as, as if you were telling me every year. Yeah, and I think there's <clears throat> having that um, distinction of like, distinction. Mm-hmm. what does it mean to receive a word? Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes it's um, you see things just over and over and over and over again. It's like, okay, 
I just prayed about this last week, and all I keep seeing is 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 giving me confirmation for what I prayed for. Sometimes it's you read something, and then there's just clarity yeah. for what you prayed for. Sometimes it is that, as you mentioned, like that <clears throat> that confirmation in your spirit that you just know whether it's peace about something or maybe it's nope. Yeah, you know this isn't the time for you to. I mean, these things become personal, but I think when we bring it to a collective in a church setting, in a group setting, um, because <laughs> some people, their complaint is always the words that people speak is always generic. Yeah. You, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like the people that are uh, part of the group that may say God doesn't you know, speak yeah. in that kind of way anymore, <clears throat> part of the thing is um, they'll say is, you guys are always saying generic things yeah. in a sense, you know? And so, um, but all that to say, I, th I think it, it comes with a measure of faith, you know, yeah. a measure of um, having those moments of like learning to hear from the Lord, yeah. um, distinguishing his voice from the voice of another, things yeah. of that nature. Yeah. yeah. And I, a thought that came up while you were talking about never satisfied because a thought that I've had that I don't think I'm going to be able to articulate super well because it's still something that I'm like sorting through is some Christians pursue the Lord as a means to the end of the fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore to where they're not actually seeking the Lord. They're just seeking his benefits. Mm -hmm. And I can't put in an all encompassing way, like the traits that all those people have in common, but at least one of them that I think I know for sure is people who love the Lord but don't love people because then they're just trying to reap the benefits of being in his presence and all that. And then also this is a little bit more questionable and I'm still processing this, but it's like those people who only want to be in the presence of God in the church but aren't willing to go out and serve and love people. Mm. With the acknowledgement that I know there are people who are called to be, you know, intercessors in the prayer room mm -hmm. for hours and hours on end. But still at the same time, you know, they got to exit that place at some point because they get they kind of got to get some some food or some Chick-fil-A and they have opportunities to go love people um, yeah. or sorry, or go get Costa Vida. Um, and <laughs> You just had to. We 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 to deep moment. I, 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 I will let you address that later. I promise. But uh, hey, <laughs> Joseph is with me. But in it, um, you, you gotta you gotta get you gotta leave and eventually like go love people. And so, I feel like I have seen this tendency uh, from time to time of people pursuing God as a means to the end yep. of like the benefits that He brings. And those, and in it, where it comes back around to this is. I think how the Lord protects people from that and convicts people and shows people is that those benefits will never actually satisfy because mm -hmm. the one who comes with those benefits is not there with them. Mm -hmm. And he's the one who ultimately satisfies, not those benefits. Yeah. And so I'm glad I hadn't like connected that in my mind yet. And so I'm grateful that you brought that up. Because it's apart from him, anything apart from him, it's like, what is it? You know, like... Um, as you were talking, I was thinking about it. Like I'm a I'm a crybaby, y'all. So I might tear up a little bit. But I just think about um, I always see visuals, and so I think about when you, you were saying that um, a child, uh, a teenage a teenage boy, say it's a teenage boy and his father, and the father like really loves his son, and, and the father can do anything he can for his son, um, and the fun, and the son is just very emotionally like not connected. Like only time he will text him every time he needs something, and the father will give it to him. Um, but all the father wants is just that connection. And then that, that son um, feels the disconnect as well, but doesn't know how to articulate it. But on, like, the, the only solution, um, the solution that he, that he wants and needs it will come from just being in his father's presence, just sitting with him, um, not texting him, not asking him for something, but literally just being there. And I, I just saw that piece of like, man, the father wants to connect, the son wants to connect, but sometimes there's this, dis this disconnect between the two because the son doesn't know how to just sit in his father's presence. Um, and I've, 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 I've learned that um, with my past and my father and learning what God the father looks like. Um, Cause I was afraid to come to him. Like I was like, I don't know about this. I'm just going, Lord, thank you for everything you've done. 
But what I've, one thing I've grown to know is like, man, like you care much more about me being with you than anything else that you can offer me. Um, and there's many, there's been many times where you've held some things. It wasn't like out of um, 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 punishment, but it was like, if I give this to you, you're just gonna run to it. Like you're not gonna run to me. Um, and so, I think it's just ultimately like it's like you said. You hear people say, "Oh, it's about relationship." It truly is. Like it's truly about relationship. And I think about Jesus when he was here. Like every time he did something, he went right back to the Father. You know, like he knew. He knew where his source came from. He knew where his well came from every single time. And I'm like, if I, if I, no matter how many pastors, no matter how many people are in my life, I know that I have a true example, which was Jesus, and he lived it. So I know if I, if I miss my way, I can look back to Jesus and what he did, and he did it every single time. Yeah. And before, and I'm, you'll have something to say, but before we leave the topic about like prophetic words and how to handle just that realm of things, I want to encourage and honor you and the rest of the friend group with an axle and just our wider friend group because um you know i feel like it's easy for christians to talk a lot of the time about you know issues or struggles or problems they see with the church or other christians but not honor those who they see it do, being handled well in mm -hmm. and so before we leave that i just want to honor like you and that like y'all axle fam like the rest of our friend group like i see us handling it well and in a mm -hmm. mature way not just in a um light and butterflies and oh this is so cool kind of way but with like the weight that it comes with so. that's real like it's been so like um encouraging to like be around people like our age and to see honor amongst us like it's it's insane like and I, to see how people how we navigate spaces and like you say, like honor the people that we're around, whether churches we're serving or the people group that we're around. Like it's it's beautiful. Like I know some some set of people who don't do that, you know, they'll dog you, you know, or they'll whatever. But it's just beautiful. I'm like, man, like Lord, thank you for surrounding me with people that know how to honor you, know how to honor your people, no matter what the situation and circumstance may be. So it's a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. And it, <clears throat> it made me think of like um on my, I think, yeah, it was today on my way to work. Mm -hmm. I was driving, and um, I think I was praying at the time. But I, I came to a stop sign, and I look. You ever, you ever just see when birds are all just hanging out in one spot? Yeah. Yeah, they were, like, all over the lights, all over the building right next to us, and just hanging out there. Um, but it made me think about, you know, the verse about, you know, God being able to take care of, mm -hmm. you know, the birds and, and things like that. And it was just such a... Um, mm -hmm. small moment of the Lord like reminding me mm -hmm. of look at these birds they don't have 401ks they don't <laughs> they, they don't didn't go to school <laughs> you know what I'm saying yeah. like I literally sat there for sure? <laughs> not that I know of you know I, I sat there out. for yeah, man. a go good amount to, of time really Big thinking Bird about, about it not huh? yeah, Big Bird, Bird. I, sat, I sat there for a good amount of time thinking about it like these birds don't do nothing mm -mm. you know and then but he takes care of them, you know, and, and I was just like, man, like, why, why, why do I, or why do we, why do I fall into those moments where it's like, man, Lord, are you really going to come through? <laughs> yeah. You know, but it's a simple reminder of just seeing birds hanging out, yeah. doing life, you know, the birds are, are, are in communion and, and with one another, uh, doing life. And I was just like, man, like, this is how he, <clears throat> the Lord takes care of us. And it was that small illustration yeah. that brought up a verse that, that I knew in my heart where the Lord was able to confirm, like, no, I, I got you. You know what I'm saying? To to kind of answer your, um, some of that. But I, I've, I've just learned in my um, walk, especially in this specific area, that whenever you're in an environment and it feels like a lot of people are doing things, but you're not, doing it you know it's 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 okay you don't have to feel pressure to feel that you know i have to give this word or something like mm -hmm. that it's like it's like no you don't you know don't don't force things yeah, don't force <laughs> you know it. what i'm saying <laughs> like don't force things because then you're just gonna look, look kind of crazy you know for yeah. no reason so i think it's just being mindful for me i'm always when I'm in those environments, I pray. I'm like, Lord, is there something in my heart? If not, cool. Mm -hmm. I'll be a participant, yeah. you know, I'll receive okay. and, and everything else. But 
if there's not, then that's okay with me too. But um, kind of going back to you, um, well, we've been on you, but um, <laughs> when when did we do the um, the worship night? It was in October. Was that 2022, maybe? It may be 2022. Yeah, 2022, yeah, yeah, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it must have I been mean, 22. you weren't married yet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 22, 22. Yeah, 22. We in need October to add that to your 22. intro. Married man. Ah, husband, married husband, man. Husband to Aiden Mompende. Nah, we, we need to add that man. to the intro. Hey, I don't want people to go look her up, you know. But ah. yeah, yeah, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll bleep that out. Yeah, yeah, yeah bleep it out. Yeah, we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> you know, so, so I had a worship night. Um, I think we probably talked about it, you know, as it was upcoming. Um, so I hate Jalen up. I was like, yo, yeah. like, you know, I'm trying to assemble a team of people together to come worship, you know. Justice and, and, League. Huh? The Justice League. Yeah, Justice yeah. League, essentially. Because your groomsmen were the Avengers, so this was the Justice yeah, League. Yeah, it, it's something a little different. We'll differentiate yeah. the two. Um, but, you know, he, he asked me, hey, what kind of... Um, church environment is this because I was working at the Baptist church and you know I wasn't there to ruffle feathers you know I was there to serve and you know and and, and I submitted to him and he was like hey you know we're here to worship the Lord it doesn't have to look a certain way and and things of that nature and, and he came and the team did a great job um and you know for those fun. of you that never huh it was fun yeah it was it was, it was a good time yeah. and, and for those of you that never heard him sing um I'm not going to get into all that. But um, how did that even come about? You know what I'm saying? Like, how did uh, did you kind of discover the, man, I can actually sing. Oh, yeah. You know? So, yeah, I grew up singing. I was a little boy in my family church, singing the choir, high soprano, sat sitting next to my mom, was singing very high as a little kid. Mm. My mom was a soprano as well. Um, and then, you know, as you become a young a young man, life hits you mm -hmm. and my voice changed and I couldn't hit the notes that I once hit before and um, I hated my voice after that so I was like oh no I never want to do this again so I stopped singing mm -hmm. I stopped singing and um, when I was younger I, I thought I wanted to be a superstar I wanted to be a singer I wanted to be like Usher and mm -hmm. all them um, at the time, I didn't have any like, <laughs> like Fred Hammond. There we go. I was yeah, like, yeah. I was about yeah. to say Usher, Chris Brown, yeah. <laughs> Usher. Um, <laughs> and yeah, I think I once my voice changed, I didn't really like it at much. But I grew up in a singing family, mm. uh, so my mom, my grandmother, my, gran my grandfather, like all of them, my cousins, we just we just sang, and we would come together, and they were just every time family we were just sing. So I know that it was intrinsically a part of who I am. Um, but when it came to like ministering to the Lord, I'm like, that season is done. And I think it was 20, mm, 2013, 2013, 2014, um, the Lord started bringing it up a little bit more and more. Um, I, me and my friends, we had a nonprofit. It was called Unashamed Impact where we would go and um, feed the homeless, street ministry, all of that. And it kind of blew up around the world as well. And so... Um, we just do these little conferences where we give all of our leads from all over the world and we bring them together and we just have worship and stuff like that. So everything was good. Like we had that weekend, everything was planned. Um, uh, we had our speaker set. We had our um, worship team set. Last minute, the worship team dropped out. Mm. And we're like, what the world's going on? So we're in a, we're in a hotel. We're doing the final raps. And like, we got to find a worship team. We got to find something. And the room gets quiet. And I'm like, well, I, I look up. And everybody looking at me. I'm like, what you looking at me for? Mm. And it's like, Jalen, you're going to sing. I said, no, I'm not. Yeah. That's not happening. Yeah. I don't sing. <laughs> and so uh, literally, as I said that, I, got, I felt conviction right there. Mm. And I was like, oh, no. I think I got to sing, y'all. And it was like, yeah. You do, and so um, I mean, I went into a, like a frenzy. I was like, "Oh no, I don't even know if I sound right. I don't know what I was saying." And so um, the Lord came through. Like he he had a guy come and found these tracks, stuff like that. And I would never forget that moment. <laughs> just mm -hmm. opening up and just having to just sing barefoot. Mm -hmm. All right, Lord, we're gonna do this, no matter what it sounds like. And I think that was the beginning of the season where he was like, "All right, like I'm putting this back." It's back on his heart for me. 
Um, and so sequential years after that, he would just place me in these weird, awkward situations with singing. Um, he brought me to a church. I told him I didn't want to go there. I told him I said I'd never go to a mega church. Mm-hmm. Never tell the world what you're never going to do. <laughs> that I'm never going to make a million dollars. No, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I need it. Yeah, Lord, yeah. Lord, I'm never going to make the goal. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Um, so I said, I said, Lord, I, I never want to go to a mega church. Mm. And at the time, he was like, Oh, bet. So he took me to one. Like it was just, mm. it was a big old church. And um, at the time, um, the pastors. The worship pastors there um, were David and Nicole Binion. Mm-hmm. And I walked yeah. in, I was like, what are they doing here? I didn't know they were here. Because mm-hmm. uh, I remember growing up and seeing her uh, as, a, as a young kid and like those circuits and stuff like that, singing mm-hmm. and worshiping in different places. And so I would just go, I'm like, man, this is great worship to be underneath. And one thing I like, I love being around in the atmosphere, I was like, wow, they really taught you the heart, heart posture of worship. Um, and like David does this like prophetic singing song prayer thing he does. Mm. Um, and so I never, every time I would go to service, people would look up and be like, why aren't you singing? I'm like, mind your business. Mm. And so one time this lady, she gets, she gets my information from a friend. Um, I get an email saying, hey, you have auditions. <laughs> hey. Wow. I said, for what? <laughs> I don't even yeah. know who you are. Yeah. So I end up, go- I end up going. Um, I walk in and it's the room, like David and Nicole, they're sitting there. I was like, hey, so we're just going to play and you just fall in. And I was like, this is awkward. I don't, I don't yeah. think I want to do this. So I just did it. And so the, it, again, like sequential things happen of like the Lord was like, hey, I want you to be in this space. And uh, I remember telling him, I was like, I don't want to do this. And the Lord was like, whose gift is it? And I'm like, oh, it's yours. Mm. And so um, over time, he's been working with my belief and self like identity issues and doubts. Um, and even when I came to Mercy Culture, like once I left that church, um, the Lord released me from the church to transition. Um, when I came to Mercy Culture, it was my goal not to tell anybody that I sang. Mm. I was like, I just want to come to church. No, I, have to, I don't have to do it anymore. I can just rest. I need, I need to heal. I need to hear the Lord. I need to love him more. And I was living wild um, before then. And so I was mm. like, I just want to come. And so I, I, it was a team night. Uh, the decision in my heart was like, okay, I think I'm about to go here after me fighting it. Um, I walk up to meet Pastor. Um, well, no, I got pulled to meet him because um, I was like, I'll meet him eventually. Um, you know, we'll, we'll bump we'll bump shoulders eventually. Yeah. Um, and so we're talking. Me and Pastor Lane were talking. He's like, oh, well, great. I'm glad that you're here. And da, 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 da. mid-conversation, he's like, you're a worshiper. And I'm like, I'm in the church. I'm like, do I lie to my future mm, pastor right now? Yeah. I said, oh, I, I've done it before. And he's like, <laughs> done it before. And I was yeah. like, yeah. He's like, hmm. And so he just kept the conversation going. And I was like, oh, is that a lie, Lord? I don't know yeah. if it was a lie or not, but I have done it before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we finished uh, the conversation. He was like, when you're ready, let me know. Mm. And just walks off. And I was like, that's weird. Like, yeah. okay. And so literally, ev- like, every single time the Lord would, like, snitch on me, the grand snitcher, like, mm. he would just, like, give people <laughs> words mm-hmm. about a gift that I had, mm-hmm. like these uh, older ladies, I love them at the church, they're like at our prayer group, and they was like, you have a gift that you're holding on. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm, I'm like, he's like, and it's, you know what it is. Yeah, it has to do with your voice. And I was like, oh my God. And like, mm-hmm. Pastor Jasmine's like right here. Yeah. And she's like laughing like, <laughs> when you gonna get in? You know, like yeah, 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 when you just yeah. gonna submit to the Lord? Yeah, you know, yeah. how, many, so, how many punches you got? How many take punches you got to take? You know, I was yeah. a little stubborn back in the day, and so I think it came to now to the Lord asked me again, whose gift is it? And I was mm-hmm. like, it's yours. And so, yeah, I was like, Lord, this is yours. If you want to use it, you can. Um, I'm just here for the ride. <laughs> Teach mm-hmm. me your ways. <laughs> mm-hmm. And so that's kind of how it's been. Mm-hmm. Of like, Lord, it's yours. However you want to do it, however you want to go about it, then. Um, you can use it and just help my mind to get over my insecurities. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's. <laughs> you see, it takes a second for that though. to settle in. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah that's so. So, <clears throat> so did you join? Um, were you at Mercy when they were at the um, at the gym? I yes. Think. So I joined Mercy when they were doing like team nights at Seven City. Okay. And then, um, and then, like I think we had two things, and then we went over to the high school. Mm-hmm. So you were singing already at, at the high school? No. So no. there was a process of like auditions uh, that you go through, and you do auditions, and you do a small group, and then it's like a 
over over seven week process mm. of like small groups and community building and doing some heart things and and navigating the presence together and building together uh, before you even like hit platform before mm. you even get another step to be like yes you're on the team and so it was just this process of like I didn't know I needed it until I'm like oh wow like this is healing because before I just auditioned I got on the team like I put on the stage but mm. before I'm like oh like no like there's been some hard things there's been some spiritual um um not I, I don't want to say spiritual coaching that sounds like new age but mm. like there's been like just stewarding spiritual fathering yeah mothering mothering, mothering. yes yeah, spiritual father and mothering because we have mothers and fathers in the room with us mm. um um, during that season. And so that's kind of how it was before. And I think I was the, happened to be the last Sunday in the gym before we moved to the new building. So, mm. so I was there for like months before I even hit platform. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Ben, do you have something? No, 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 no. Go ahead. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah. What would you say has been the impact that it's had in your heart and your mind and your spirit and your gifts and your creativity, you being a part of serving and worship? at MC and even you mentioned needing healing mm -hmm. something that I've learned from like a relationship standpoint is you know if if you're broken in relationship part of the healing has to take place in relationship yeah it can't just take place when you're single and I know that is true in other areas as well because I've seen it so like what did that healing journey look like after you joined worship too yeah it it was I lived life solo for my basically my whole life like I was a very internal kid um and so it the I think the tipping of domino was when Pastor Jasmine she we we met up one day and she asked me a question she's like Jay like who knows your whole life story and it hit me like no one knows my whole life story like I think it was I was always a person that knew everyone's life story because I was just, I wanted to be there for them I was a, a lot of stuff in my life that I didn't have I didn't have like a a steady brother. I didn't have like a father figure. I didn't have these things. So in my mind, I'm like, well, if you never had it, just be it for somebody else. And so I was able to be it, but never knew how to receive it. Um, and so that became like the tipping of the domino for me walking with people of like, oh, Jay, like when you're struggling, like it's okay to reach out to somebody. It's like, hey, I'm struggling and not suffer alone. Like um, when you just need a prayer or, you know, like, or if you just want to hang with somebody, like it's okay to reach out and be like, hey, I actually need some time just to kick it with you, you know? Um, I think just in that aspect of community that they fostered um, for me at that stage was like what I needed. It was a breath of fresh air for me. Um, and it really showed me how, how much more, how much, like how important it is um, to steward those atmospheres of authenticity and, and community um, with worship. Like, it's one thing we can come and we can do um, our task, say, as Levites, um, but it's another thing when you can look across that stage and say, oh, I actually love this person. I know this person. I remember when they walked me through this moment where I wanted to give up. And um, I remember when me and her talked that one time and we connected and the Lord came, we just prayed and then we just felt the glory. Like, like we, we could pull back on history, um, and so, and it just speaks to God's heart for community. And, um, yeah, one of the things I've also learned just being a part of, um, just that worship community is that, um, we would always say I would, it was got to a point for me, like my church, we have a very mission. We have a mission, <laughs> I believe, like from the Lord, like some people, like I see different worship teams, like they have different missions, like some have the ability to um, their task to sit at his feet with the oil, you know? Um, some have um, the task to like carry a big mirror that Jesus, you know, for you to look at him, you know? Like, and I think about the different churches, like different churches you hold um, a, a mission from the Lord of like what the Levites, what, how he wants his Levites of that house to sound. There are some, there are certain songs that, um, no matter how small or how big the church is, there are certain songs I believe that for your house that he wants to give to you, um, to steward in your communities, um, to sing out, um, to partner with what the Lord is saying in your house. And so I know in Mercy Culture, it's like we're <laughs> gearing up, <laughs> ready <laughs> for war in a way. And so I had to learn and ask the Lord, Lord, what is that for me? Because 
for me, some would say I lean more like Jesus culture, like Lord Jesus, you know. Mm -hmm. But you know, we got mercy culture, spirit of wisdom. Like it's very like intense yeah, for, for sure. some. For sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> it's very like charge, you know, like full regalia. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so yeah. I had to learn even that, like. What's the difference between my sound and what's the difference between the sound of the house and what the Lord is doing, on, and, you know? And it was very humbling to be like, oh, Lord, like, sometimes people would take um, their sound and want to, like, well, it's not my sound, so that maybe this is not how it's supposed to be, but it's like, no, what is the Lord doing in this moment? And I realized that um, I have to, um, I get, no, I don't have to, I get to submit to what the Lord is doing, um, even when it comes to songs, like I may want to sing uh, Old MacDonald Had a Farm, but that mm. might not be the, the mission of mm -hmm. this Sunday. It may be Humpty Dumpty, Fell on the Wall, mm -hmm. you know, like, and I wouldn't be in unity with the Lord. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I'm singing, you know, Old MacDonald Had a Farm when actually he wants to address, you know, Humpty Dumpty on the wall, you know? I got a serious question. What? Do you think. Noah had his own version of Old MacDonald had a farm. Old my Noah had a boat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> now now y'all can see why I'm not a singer. You know, I'm a yeah. I'm gonna take that into my counter. Come on, Josue. That, that that should make you chuckle. Why hasn't there been a song about Noah and the boat? Mm. Mm. We have Father Abraham and many sons. Mm -hmm. How many sons that Father Abraham? Why mm -hmm. didn't they make a song about Noah and his and his animals? Is too many animals uh -huh. to count? Maybe that's something prophetic for you to take back to. You know, I might. Like, oh, I think there may be something. You know, there. Make an MC Kids song. Yes. Row, 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 give up. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy because I, I didn't. I didn't grow up in. Um, is it called vocational Bible school? Like VBS? Yeah, yeah, I didn't grow yeah, up yeah. in that. So I never learned those songs. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so people will sing the Father Abraham. I'm like, you I say, I have no clue what yeah, that is, you know? No Wait, what, what um, kind of VBS did y'all do back in the Congo? We didn't. My dad was preaching. You sat there. <laughs> you know, three hours, four hours. Preaching. Yeah. Did you have kids church? Nah. We didn't either. Nah, we didn't have. Uh, you were with the adults. Yeah. You know? On the pew. We were there. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't. They didn't really. I didn't even know that was a thing until I came to American yeah. churches where I was like, oh, okay. There's kind of that separation. Um, but <clears throat> in terms of like, you know, you're talking about there being like different sounds for different places and, and, and things of that nature. Um, so in the process of does does Mercy Culture come out with its own songs and yeah so yeah. they yeah they um, they whatever the Lord drops in the time yeah they release mm -hmm. those songs so what is the um, what's that process like oh like you know, songs to, yeah, yeah, is yeah, it, yeah is it what's that process of like getting a lyric yeah agreeing on something <laughs> this don't really sound right how yeah. long does they typically take before you guys bring something like that on stage to be able to share with everybody else oh that's funny because <laughs> sometimes what that happen is like um i would say majority of the songs that mercy culture has released were like just spontaneous prophetic moments um and they were just they they dropped and we just kept <laughs> to talk about the fear of the Lord process, oh. like in specific, because I do love that story. Okay, and it's applicable. Yeah, that was crazy. So, um, fear of the Lord um, song came out of this very interesting. So, we had like a prayer night for um, justice residents for um, to justice reform, and so we're, they have we have property on the on the campus, and so we went to go pray. It was a very cold night. Mm. And it's so cold, my God. Mm. Um, so we, uh, Pastor Heather was like, oh, we need to go pray over the land. And so myself and Pastor Jasmine happened to be on for worship at mm -hmm. that moment. And so we're like bundled up, like singing. And um, and all of a sudden, like, so she's singing, they're playing. And um, this is like a band or just the three? It's of like you guys? us, it's me, her. And then we had like a band. Like we had like, we had a guitar, cajon. And something else. I forgot what else. And you guys are... We're outside. Just singing to the land. <laughs> oh, oh, we're worshiping. Oh, and people, so, so there. people out there, yeah. People, people out there, there worshiping. Okay, 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 gotcha. We had people come up. Yeah. <laughs> singing to the land. I didn't know, I didn't know if it was like... Native American. No, no, no. I didn't know if it was like... 
Like y'all doing some kind of prayer walk? Oh, so just the three see, see the birds? <laughs> huh? <laughs> I don't know. No, no, Trying to save good, the land. Good you know? question. The earth is groaning for hey, the sons yes, of. Anyways, yes. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so we were praying. I ain't gonna let these rocks cry out for <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah we, it was a prayer verse. night as well. So we worshipped. Yeah. We prayed over the land. Mm. Um, um, and so yeah, that's kind of how it was. And so we were we were we were singing, and all of a sudden, um, Pastor Jasmine she starts singing. She says. All she said was no spirit, and it literally the I I heard the lyrics. I heard the lyrics and I heard the melody in my spirit. Uh, mm-hmm. I finished the sentence like, but the Holy Spirit. And we looked at each other like, like how do you, how did you know mm-hmm. that song? And we just kept singing it. And so I didn't know that because she had left one time and she went to record something on her phone. Mm-hmm. She comes back and it happened to be that. Mm. Um, so the song kind of just dropped in both of us at the same time. Don't even know Holy Spirit. I'm saying don't even know how, but the Holy Spirit. And I would never forget that moment. We looked at each other like, how do you know this song? And so afterwards, she's like, Jake, how did you know that song? I was like, I don't know. Like, I feel like I just knew the song. Like, mm. I finished it. I knew the melody. It just dropped. Um, and she's like, that is crazy. And she, she literally played the voice message back to me. She's like, I literally went over there and recorded it. Mm. Um, and so we were on together for that Sunday. Um, and so literally months before I, no, many months before I gotten um, the scripture, not by might, not by power, but by spirit of the Lord. That mm-hmm. melody came to me. It dropped one morning I was leading mm-hmm. months ago. And we was like, Jalen, what is this? I feel like there's something on this. We don't know when. And this, we didn't, we didn't write a song. We didn't try to force it. We was like, Lord, you will reveal what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just kind of, we, we still incorporated in our encounters, our daily, our, pers- our corporate encounters um, through sets. And so we got to this Thursday where we have like rehearsals, we call them worship rooms, where we just kind of take the set and what the Lord is saying and just worship with the Lord and see what he has to say about it and what he wants to put and what he wants to keep. Um, and it was like a holy moment. Like I have never in my life seen anything like this where the musicians to the vocalists to dance, to everything just kind of all submitted and was unified to like the melodies to everything just clicked and it, mm. and I knew like this is a song from the Lord like we didn't write we didn't sit down and write this song we didn't we didn't have writing sessions for it at all um, it literally just came out with us just like staying in his presence and so I'll never forget um, we're worshiping and she kept singing no spirit but the Holy Spirit and so I saw um, the seven spirits of God mm. and she saw the same thing at the same time and so I remember getting my my Bible and I was just started reading it out. And Jasmine, she picks up the she picks it up. She has a spiritual gift for that with a melody that fits it perfectly. Mm-hmm. And I'm just looking at her like, what is happening right now? And so it was the Lord. Like, and then our one of our intercessors had a dream that like the menorah, um, which kind of represents the state of spirits of God, literally came and dropped in the middle of um, the platform and it just kicked up this dust. Um, and it literally was like what is happening? I felt the Lord on. I was like, something's going to happen Sunday. I think we're doing this song. And so we get to Sunday and um, like our pastors don't even know about it. So song. like, they kind of had a hint of prayer night, but then mm-hmm. I was like, what is happening? And I was like, hey, something came out Thursday from that night. We're going to do this. And so I never forget that Sunday when it, when it came out, um, it was just the Lord was there. Like I've, I, I feel like I, if I could have said I've been taking, I was taken up in the glory. It felt like I was. Like mm-hmm. I didn't even feel like I was there. Um, and then post process, they were trying to figure out how to do it. Like what do we do to release it? Do we need to change some things? Like I feel like this song could be broken up into many different things. But they had to literally stop and ask the Lord. Um, and the Lord was like, No, I want the original version of it like don't give me and that's been y'all that was there's cracks in that song like people singing at the wrong time like this is the version that's on youtube this is the version that, that was released. the first time you guys that was the first time we released wow. the song and so that's kind of like how most of the songs are like mm-hmm. they're very prophetic spontaneous sometimes in the moment mm-hmm. sometimes the lord gives us an uh, opportunity like house of god to go like uh, sit with his presence and and things will come but most of the songs are just coming from like in that moment mm-hmm. Which is crazy. Yeah. And I mean, y'all have shared that story in actual intensives and things like that before. And it's been so much fun. Like every time I hear that, it's so much fun. And it continues to inspire me because like a lesson that I've learned from that is like 
things that are dear to the Lord need to be created in intimacy with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't, that didn't fully click until like that story and just like us, like, cause I think I was there that Thursday night too. Cause that was whenever I was going to the rehearsals and all like, yep. I think, I think I might have a voice recording of it, probably actually. Do. but it was, it was special. And that was the time where like I was starting to like sit on letters from love itself and like, what is this going to be? And, and, and learning how to steward it in the fear of him because it is something that is dear to his heart and like, what does this exactly mean? And, and even it's inspired like the process for the podcast a lot mm -hmm. to where like that would have been, I mean, I think a little bit over a year ago, something like that. Yeah. Um, and it was, and yeah, and there was a lot of things that I was like, that, I mean, we were praying into and considering at that time because like Josue was about to get engaged and like we had just gotten back from a trip to LA and it's just like, what is this? Like, what does this mean? Yeah. Like, like life is going to be different or kind of pivot from here. And the Lord just being able to be close and sustaining us through that was like a really, really, really key thing. Wow. And so y'all's, y'all's stewardship is impacting more than just like the art that y'all are stewarding, like other people, friends, lives, things like that too. And so it was, it's been really cool to be able to see that. It's crazy. Like it teaches me something new every day. Like even when I think about the areas of my life that, like um, in conjunction to worship, like maybe just different veins, what they call different mountains. Like it has brought an awareness of the fear of the Lord. Like before I would hear it as a young kid, but um, as an adult, I thought I needed it. Like I, I, I didn't realize how much I needed that song for myself. Um, and to know that like, I cannot do anything without the fear of the Lord. Like I, I will, like I could do stuff without the fear of the Lord. <laughs> you have the ability to do things. Um, but it grew my desire to not want to do things without the fear mm. of the Lord. Yeah. Um, because I think it just, you just carry it. You, like with the process of the song, like there's some things that um, we can try to do with our own hands, but there's things that he kind of has that he wants to do. Um, and if we submit to that, then it just be a better, it's just better. It's just better when he does it. Yeah. And it, and it, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier with the prophetic to where I think the times where it is abused, are times where there's not the fear of the Lord present. And if we can recapture like that healthy fear of the Lord, it, it would be a beautiful thing. And even in this, like, I don't, I shouldn't really dive into this because I have another thing I want to ask you. But as I've been learning about God's design for emotions over the last year through therapy and what it looks like to process emotions as a man in a healthy way and and what does the Bible actually say about emotions? Not just our church tradition, mm -hmm. which is so much incorrect. Um, but what does the Bible say? And in it, learning that there is a healthy version of fear. Mm -hmm. And so from there, like the fear of the Lord is often, I think, misunderstood in our culture today. Even by those like trying to say or trying to correct the misunderstanding, there's still like some things there that aren't quite right. And that if we understand that there are healthy versions of negative emotions there's healthy anger there's healthy fear there's healthy guilt that the fear of the lord makes a whole lot more sense yeah. if we understand like god's actual design for for those but that's a topic for another day it reminds um, me of that um i'm gonna cut you off no i saw this uh it was i guess it was a teacher or something he was saying how fear um um can protect like if you if you're in the in the woods or something and you hear something and like that fear, no, I hate to use the word trigger, that fear response kicks up. Yeah. Like that's a good thing. Like you're going to mm -hmm. get going, you know, or you're going to be like, Oh, I'm okay. You probably get ate up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, unless you're Joe Sway. Joe Sway can take a bear. Yeah. If you see me in the woods, find a bear, help, help the bear. The bear. <laughs> you know what I'm um, but yeah, I mean, <clears throat> so in light of like, you know, being able to, um, Creatively with the team, you know, the Lord is able to give you guys songs and you're releasing and all these different things. Um, I don't know how your process is, but a lot of times when I pray, I like putting on music, maybe if it's in the background, maybe I'm praying into something that I'm hearing, yeah. you know, like hearing about the fear of the Lord, it can lead me into praying about, yeah. you know, things like that. So <clears throat> for you as a worshiper and, and worship leader, um, is that 
is that weird? Like, do you hear yourself? What, what what's that? What's that process Yo, like? That's you know what I'm a saying? good question. I've yeah. not thought of that. That's a good like, question. Could you imagine I'm sitting here listening to my own sermons? You know, like, oh, this is good. <laughs> you know, let me, let me yeah, write that down. Don't, act, don't try to act like you don't listen to this podcast. I, I don't. I don't. <laughs> hey, hey, I don't listen to my own stuff. release, I don't go back. Yeah. yeah. I got to get going. It's a good question. Yeah. yeah. Huh. It's weird <laughs> for me, yeah. uh, I would say. Uh, it, I don't, I don't know if it's something I get used to. I don't know. Um, what I, I think one of the things that they would um, kind of uh, empower us to do as like set leads or whatever, um, say after a Sunday, you do a Sunday, and then they'll say, hey, go back, receive it for yourself. So just go back, listen mm-hmm. to it, receive it for yourself, whatever the Lord released on that Sunday. Because you're in it, you're in it. You mm-hmm. probably receive some things as well, but... Um, there may be some other things the Lord has which he, want, he wants you to receive. And so we would go back, we'll listen to it for ourselves, and then they would say, now go back and listen to it again and then give yourself feedback. Mm. And so we kind of got used to hearing ourselves in a way mm. for those two sakes of like um, receiving what the Lord wanted to, to the fullness of what the Lord has for us on this Sunday, but also going back and then receiving the feedback. But when it comes to like these songs that come up, it is kind of weird, you know, listen, hearing your song, you're like, hearing your voice, you're like... That's interesting. You know, mm-hmm. I'm like for me, like I hear in fear of the Lord, like I hear the mm-hmm. moments where my voice cracked. You know, you probably won't. You probably won't hear. I heard it. I heard yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> and I'm like, see, I'm like, no, I didn't do that. Like, you know, it's humbling. Yeah. You know, Lord, it's yeah. all for your glory. Like, it's, you're not looking for perfect. You know, you're looking for you know your your anointing to be on it. Um, I think yeah, it's very interesting. So I know for me, even in my in my time with the Lord, I usually lean more to instrumental. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just, I don't know why, but there's Shout something. Shout out Mr. It. Willie Augusto. Yo. Mr. Billy. Clutch. Whatever. You know, uh, yeah, what is it? Uh, Dappy, Dappy Tiki. William Augusto. Soaking in the presence. William Augusto sucking in the presence. Yeah, no. we've, we play it at the house, you know. Mm. Oh, Maybe man. I don't know the name. Yeah, we got to put yeah. you on. Yeah. Mm. It's yeah. really good. But yeah, it's kind of, it, it, for me, it's kind of weird. Okay. Mm. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Sort of the last big topic. And we can, we can go on this for however long you want because this is like a this will be a pretty broad topic but I think there's a lot of bone on the meat here so wait wait what (laughs) wait what did I say what did you say (laughs) bone on the meat (laughs) (laughs) dang it's been a while since we recorded a lot of meat on the bone man I I thought I thought I was like yeah I was like, I know English is my first language, but <laughs> <laughs> what's going on here? And I thought I've been doing good. It don't sound good. Right. I was gonna let you slide mm-hmm. on that one, man. Not me. Yeah, <laughs> Joe jo Sway can't let me. He doesn't let me. Um, I attacked a pot on it. Thought I was like, hmm, <laughs> the bone on the meat. <laughs> so, uh, you are, as we said in the intro, Mr. Fashion. Yeah, yeah. Say the end. So something that um, that I think this. I'm going to open it up to a larger context with creativity, Uh but start with fashion and then go from there of how do you know if something is a pursuit of excellence and godliness and fashion versus vanity Uh and in it going to a general question of what do you think like, what do you think it looks like to pursue holiness and loving the Lord while not being out of touch with the world and culture to where we become ineffective in our love of people and our evangelism and in just in our general conversations and general just being a human. Mm. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's the question, yo. Um, I'll, talk, I'll touch on the fashion. So, mm-hmm. uh, quick origin. So, when I was younger... Uh, my my grandmother, she's a uh, quilter. So she was a seamstress. She quilted. She did a lot of different things. And so one of the things she would do is she would teach all her grandkids like how to sew. And she would teach all her grandkids. So she'll, she'll make a quilt with all her grandkids. Hmm. Um, I happen to be the only one out of all the grandkids to like my, it perked my ears. I'm like, huh, like I know how to sew. What is that? What do I want to do? But I don't make quilts. Like that's weird. That's all women. You know, hmm. I honor you quilters of today. Um, and so it just really, one of the things I think, I think that was like an origin moment for me as a kid. It was like, oh, like, I think I can make clothes. Like, I think I could do this. Um, but as I got older, it was always taught to me that fashion is vain. It's vanity, heavy consumer, which, yeah, there's some truths to that. Um, and I just 
toss it to the wayside. Um, and I remember picking up fashion as well when I was around 16, 17, 18, again, just even more into it, getting into the tailoring and getting into all that stuff. And for me at that season, it was very vain. Like, I'm like, I can put on, like, it, it gave me access to people. Um, and then eventually it was like, I don't like this feeling. Like, people are going to be my friends because of how I dress. And they want to do these things for how I dress and just certain scenarios and situations that I was in. I was like, this is yucky. I don't want to do this anymore. So I made a whole pendulum swing to, like, getting rid of all my clothes, only doing, like, black shirts, blue jeans, and chucks. <laughs> like, I bought five of each, and I would just <laughs> wear them. Um, all which right, Steve Jobs. <laughs> <laughs> And then that kind of that kind of messed with the church because that's not godly attire. You have to put on the suit and whatever. Mm. So then my rebel came out. I was like, the Lord don't say that. So then I would like on purpose come to church with my jeans, my T-shirt, and my chucks just to, you know, rub the rub Pharisees. <laughs> no, no, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yikes. Um, but so I, I stopped. I stopped dabbling into it i just kind of got into like i just want to be comfortable and it looks look decent my mom kind of raised us that way and um as i got older the lord kept touching on it and i was like there's no way to advance the kingdom there's no way to do that like that's vain it's it's vain so i literally just i literally gave it over to the enemy like i literally it's like oh that's not yours lord it's it's for the world like there's no way for me to advance the kingdom Um, it doesn't matter to you um as until recently I think a couple years ago, he uh, brought it up and he started like prophetic words. He started, I'm starting these prophetic words about fashion. And I'm like, that ain't the Lord. I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. And he got me one day in my room. I was reading Exodus and he just starts like, uh, I use his language because that's how I talk to the Lord. He just started ripping me straight. It's like he was showing me in the Bible everywhere where he mentioned garments. And he talks about the intricacies, even the, in, even the intricacies of the temple and um, what cloth and what threads and mm. how many. And um, even like the beginning when um, Adam and Eve, um, when they, you know, when they sinned um, and they used things to cover themselves, but he had to take and make clothes for them, which was better than what they designed for themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was the first one, the first atelier in the world, you know, the first clothing designer. Um um, and I just think, and he starts showing me like all these different instances where garments matter, what the, what, what the priests wore, um, even to the point of what, what Jesus will be wearing when he comes back. And so um, it just blew my mind. I went into full repentance. I'm like, Lord, I am sorry. Like I literally just gave it over to the world and said, no, that's vanity. That's 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 worldly. That's th- that's that's not even of you. And he's like, no, I created it. Like it was meant for me. It was meant for my glory. There's a reason why I say you wear linens. There's a reason why I say um, that the breastplate should look a certain way. Um, and it began this process and this journey of like, help me understand what it looks like um, to to venture in the space because I feel like there, there is a thin line. Um, with it when it comes to vanity or I was reading, where is it? Oh gosh. I was reading the other day. I know it's chapter four. I don't know if it's Colossians. Come on, Josue. Uh, or he got to say the verse. Yeah. Um, yeah, where it talks was about, it? it's when he goes, I forgot who's it. He goes in about everything being vanity. Like it's oh, yeah, all Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. If you ain't read Ecclesiastes. Yeah, that boy Solomon. Wow. <laughs> Because I think Ecclesiastes 4 is talking about the vanity of pleasures as well. Either that oh. or 3 or something. Uh, 3, 4, 5. You just keep reading yeah, it. Yeah. He, he said he touches on everything. Mm, like He was on one. Talk about wealth. He mm-hmm. talks about pleasures. He talks about everything. And it really brings this humbling perspective of like, like if I if I allow my heart to grab hold of whatever it is, whether it's fashion, whether it's music, whatever, it can become a vanity. Mm. Um, but if I, if I know that it's submitted under something or unto something, um, there's a word called in duo, which is in Hebrew is like mean to put on. Or it talks about clothing um, that I know that it was purposed for the Lord. Um, like people say garments of praise. When you think about mm. all these different things. I think there's intention to what we put on to ourselves and it helps. Like there's times where you put on a fit, you feel good. Like mm-hmm. it also, uh, that, that's, that's a truth. Mm-hmm. Um, that's a matter. And I feel like there are some times where um, we get to partner with the Lord. Um, I usually ask people all the time to do this exercise. I'm like, one day, ask the Holy Spirit to help you with your outfit. Mm. <laughs> like, and take your time. Like, what? Like, all right, Lord, what should I wear? You know, and like, allow him to pick an outfit. There's been many times where I've seen um, 
prophetic words where um, somebody had a dream of they walked into, I see somebody with like a yellow shirt and, mm. um, and they received this word that was life changing to them and it ended up coming to fruition. And I think about like how strategic of the Lord. So they probably wouldn't even think about it. They wore a the yellow shirt for it to be that day. Like there's like little things like that that I think about. Um, sorry, it, it hasn't to, broken through for me yet. I'm sorry. It hasn't been with hasn't. my fashion stuff. Oh, you know, yeah, it, it, no, it's great. It's so cool. Everyone has their own level of what they like to put on their bodies. Mr. Swaggoo right here, I'm telling yeah. you. <laughs> look, 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 look. That's our piece so of those no swaggers that I wear. I'm, I'm so biased. <laughs> yeah. I'm just in my athleisure. We good. Yeah. So then, <clears throat> oh, wait, I don't know if, if you were done. Um, I was going to simply ask, um, in light of that, like you said, you know, you want to put on something that makes you feel good and, um, you know, you, you, you feel that. So then where, where's the line between... Um, Man, I want to stun on people. I want, I want them mm-hmm. to see what I put on, mm-hmm. as the kids say, you know. Because I have this, yeah. I think because of the, um, <laughs> the whole sneaker or preachers thing. Yeah, you know. Sometimes I don't like wear my nice shoes to go preach mm-hmm. because of that mentality for some people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like it's 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 become like a little conviction. So I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna put on some. Some shoes, even yeah. I would want to wear something else. Yeah, um, I don't want someone to think, "Oh, he just came to show off because yeah. of being on a platform." For example, so where where is that kind of line, that balance? Yeah, you know, kind of have. I think <clears throat> there's a there's a certain like conviction that comes with it, like you're saying, like there's mm-hmm. a because ultimately when you're in these spaces, say as a as a speaker, as a preacher. Um, what is bringing what what is is what you wearing bringing attention to the Lord or is it bringing attention to something else? You know, mm-hmm. but yeah, I would say it. I think it it just deals with with the conviction of the Lord that you may have with Him. Mm-hmm. Like um, He might tell you, "Hey, not not worry that. Mm-hmm. Like it's okay." Yeah, but some some would say <laughs> He would tell them <laughs> to wear it. You know, um, and I just think it's just what brings God glory. I feel like you looking the best at times can bring glory to the Lord, you mm. know, um, not for your sake, but uh, you're, you're a son of God. Like, mm-hmm. um, you get the ability, um, to present yourself. And I think that it reflects the Lord. Mm. I honestly do. But yeah, I get that. Cause I preach the sneakers. Like there's, there's this thing about it. I'm like, Oh man, like, why does that become a thing? Yeah, yeah, because it yeah. is a thing, you know? Yeah. But then it takes people like, oh man, all preachers are wearing nice tickets. I mean, they right, can make a lot right, of money right, and da 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 da. And I'm like, some have the ability to afford those sneakers right. and it's okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's not the sole purpose of why they're doing it, you know? For some, it might be, I don't know, but that fruit will be revealed. But um, hey, just let mm. it be. Yeah, because like one thing could be does the clothes that you're wearing, have an opportunity for you to like tie in a story with it mm-hmm. to like give glory to the Lord and have a testimony. And so like, for example, maybe Jalen bought this shirt in Puerto Rico while he, while he was down there and mm-hmm. it was a nice shirt. And he's just like, no, like whenever people ask me about the shirt, I can share about like my trip to, trip to Puerto Rico and like what, like the Lord showed me in that and just like an avenue to be able to like connect with people. And even, in in, way. yeah. And even the point of like, um, if the Lord asked you to give it up, why are you willing to give it up? Mm. Like if he's if he asks you to give those shoes away, are you willing to give it up? And that that question is like, what has your yes. heart? Because uh, <laughs> that's no, funny. Because Joe Sway got a story about that with shoes. <laughs> Not with the watches. With the watches, yeah. I, no. There is yeah. usually oh, every time. Yeah. I feel like there is when it comes to people who who have an eye for style or mm. the, it, okay. I'm just gonna say this. It's a God given skill. Like we we attribute singing as a God given skill. We attribute. Um, wealth building business as a God given skill, preaching as a God given skill. When you think about Exodus, when he talks about those people who were literally giving the skill to build the temple and many different other skills, it's a God given skill. Mm-hmm. Being able to dress, being able to um, create clothing, be able to do that. It's God given skill. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there are some people who have a God given skill that there are times where the Lord will ask them to give away certain pieces of clothing. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I have a friend who is good at it. The Lord keeps asking him to give away jackets. <laughs> Hmm. And I'm like, and I'm one of them. Like, I'm like, I just got this new jacket. I said, Lord, can I please keep this one? <laughs> that, was, that was an honest yeah. question, you know? Because, yeah. like, I know somebody who, like, who loves shoes, and the Lord keeps asking him to, like, give shoes away. Mm. And I know pastors who, I know a pastor who, like, who gets them, like, and it's, like, these testimonies, testimonies. 
Okay, okay. I, I, I know yeah, what you mean. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So did it hit you? What, what it happened? did. It did. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> makes sense. Yeah. 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 But I feel like, I feel like, yeah, that's, it depends. Like, you, you, are you willing to give it up if he asks you mm. to give it up? That's such a good thing. Hmm. Yeah, go ahead, um, go ahead. So I'll, I'll share this story as something that's like been a thing that I've been thinking through regarding like the holiness and without being out of touch with the world question that, that y'all could, I think, add more detail to if you wish and if it brings up thoughts. So for me, when I think one of the most valuable experiences I think I've ever had in my life was in college, being able to play lacrosse and going to a public university where I did not have very many friends who were Christians. And as a, as a preface, I'm super grateful that the Lord kept me from falling into so many things that people tend to fall into in college. Um, cause dear God, it was not by my strength, mm-hmm. <laughs> but by him, yeah. cause the Lord knows I wanted to do some other stuff other times. Um, the Lord's hand. and so in it, something that I learned through college was like how to operate as a genuine Christian around non-believers without compromising, but with also not being like someone who's like distant and not able to just have like a conversation with people. Cause I think that's mm-hmm. the thing. If, if a Christian can't even have a conversation or any points of similarity with a non-believer, it's like, okay, like there's something going on here where either your pride doesn't allow you to see connecting points that you could be vulnerable in. Um, you're not enjoying just the gifts that God's given us in this world, whether it's sports, whether it's books, whether it's film, whatever that we can connect with, with people. Um, and we're not just like living life to where we can like the question of, Oh, what has your spring been like so far? Mm-hmm. Doesn't even come to mind. And so while I was in college, um, there were so many examples of like like playing lacrosse. Obviously, there's a ton of parties whenever you're playing sports, um, especially like the first year and then towards the end of college. Like I felt like the Lord was like, no, like go to these, like spend time with these yeah. teammates, get to know them, love them. And I've given you the self-control to be able to not drink, to be able to not drink until you're 21 um, and, I, and as I did that, as I just lived life, they, they saw the consistency and they saw the genuine care that I had for them. And even though like the older teammates were like, ah, Chase tonight, T- tonight. And, <laughs> and the ongoing joke was like, nah, nah, not tonight. I think I'm good. I think I'm good. In it, they saw this like just genuine camaraderie being built, which yeah. from there is the foundation for them to be able to, to ask questions that then you're able to kind of share what like what your values and what your perspective and what the Lord's doing in your life. And then them being able to share things like I cannot count the number of times that teammates share things with me that they didn't share with anyone else. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy how even in that I felt comfortable sometimes sharing with my non-believing friends things that I didn't feel comfortable sharing with my Christian friends. And because there was this um, humility and this admission of, yo, I'm not perfect here Mm -hmm. that, that was present. And so in it, um, I mean, I, th- I think there's a lot of things just from that in general, but there's, in terms of like holiness and how to not be out of touch with the world, because that's just been a big question that I've been sitting on, especially as we're going into like volume two for Letters from Love Itself, because that's like a, a character trait among some of the writers to invite that I felt like the mm-hmm. Lord's told me to look for. Um, like there's like character consistency, there is genuine care for people, there is a genuine enjoyment of creation. Um, there is um, not a fear of people. Um, there is this um, not feeling like you have to be insulated or else you're going to be contaminated. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of other stuff that I felt like I learned from college that I'm able to identify among other people. Um, mm. But yeah, just as like a last thing, if that gives you any ideas or details or thoughts. Yeah, I, it's funny because I, I was thinking this thought the other day. Uh, I almost put on a... <laughs> I almost put it on social media. I was like, how, how many how many unsaved friends do you have? And they're just a question to the Christians. Um, because I think about this one relationship that I have in my life that the Lord told me not to retreat from. And they don't believe in the Lord. They don't believe in God at all. Uh, we've known each other for since sixth grade. It's my best friend. It's like my brother. And um, I've seen God through it all. Like, he's coming to church. He's The conversation we've had, like, um, he was like, yeah, you know, I'll pray for you. I'm like, what you talking about? <laughs> you? You going to pray for me? 
like who are you praying to first of all? You know, like <laughs> no, but it's like when I think about um, like there's a, you said this thing of like this fear of people and like of the contamination. Like there's one thing to place honor on somebody like who like you know who is called to the church. Like you're called to the church. You're called to be around a bunch of Christians and that's your ministry. But I think there there has to be. Um, I feel like the same level of honor of those who are called outside of the four walls as well. And I feel like it's going to be many more people that fit in the second category than the yeah. first, to be honest. Because, like, um, the Great Commission, obviously, and also there's just your call to certain people. I remember I was talking to a friend of mine. He's like, bro, I feel like I'm just, like, dying. And I'm like, what do you mean by that? He's just like, I go to church and da 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 And I'm like, I was like, oh, I know what it is. You're called to be out. And I was like, I've seen you out with people. Like, you are light and you shine. I said, you're like, not to say you're dying in the church. Like, it's the wrong kind of wording. But, like, you're not in the lane that you're supposed to be in. So it feels like, it feels hard for you because you're not doing it. Like, you're not doing what you're called to do. You're not out talking to the people. You're not out sharing the light and sharing those things. And I think that, um, I think it's, for me, I, I think about that all the time. Like, say, I said, Lord, if, if you're calling me into, like, this whole, say, fashion world or whatever it looks like, like, I'm going to be surrounded by probably the majority of people who don't believe. And, like, I, like, I, I think that's an honor in a way, but there's, like, this still reverence of, like, stay holy. And, and there's this uh, level of accountability and there's a level of, um, yeah, just being able to love somebody and bring them to a table to meet the king like Mm -hmm. like they like i mean many times they probably set the table for you but i'm like lord get us to a point um where we can set the table and invite them to the table and so um and that's That's good it reminds me of this one moment i was at a wedding and the guy got up and he gave like a uh, a toast speech and and it was like i wish i could have record well they probably recorded it but I wish I could take it and show it to people because he was saved. His friend wasn't saved um, at the time when they met. And he just, he starts talking about his friend's character. And he was like, I remember many times we'll go out and you would never drink. I remember many times that like, we tried to party and da, 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 and you would never do that. He was like, well, I love the Lord and like, I love you, but I won't do that. And he was like, your consistency um, and even your authenticity um, through those moments showed me that God was real. And I think that's the key. It's like we get to be the light bearers of God no matter what situation we're in. And um, yeah, there will be temptation to dim your light. There will be temptation to say, oh, this probably is not a real thing. Like, But like the Lord has tasked us and granted us the opportunity to be in these spaces. And so it's like when I think about those testimonies of like that guy talking about his friend, I'm like, okay, like I get an opportunity to be a light bearer. Um, it may not be, it may not be me shoving scripture down his throat every single time, my best friend, but it is me showing love and speaking up about truth when it's that time to speak on. Because if we're if we're really friends, we should be able to talk about these things and not even have the same beliefs, you know. Um, and I think that that's just kind of what we we get to do as Christians, um, as believers of the Lord, Savior Jesus Christ. Um, and so yeah, I don't know. You have anything? Yeah, Josue, anything? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think there's, <clears throat> there's, where's that verse at? Yeah, put it up. Theologian, young theologian. Young, young, oh, man, young theologian. Like, uh, yeah, don't act like you joking. don't have that whole thing memorized. No. Nah, I don't have it. I wish I did. And the tablets of his heart. That would be cool. Mm. But the man got archives. Big tablets. <laughs> Look, he got yeah. archives from heaven. Nah, it says, uh, <clears throat> it says, now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To mm-hmm. the one, we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. Um, so that's um, 2 Corinthians towards the end. And then if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians 2, if you go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, it's where he talks about you guys are the epistles. Mm-hmm. Um, written and read by all men, you know, so he kind of uses on one hand fragrance, another a letter that yeah. people were able to see. So, so it's, it will be strange for, um, for us to get saved and not deal with unbelievers, keep mm-hmm. them away yeah. um, type of deal because it's like, well, who's going to go talk to them? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, who's going to go, um, even if for not 
evangelism, but you got to build relationships with people. Yeah. You know, you got to start a conversation with people. Um, <clears throat> we're, we're not on the, um, this moral high ground to where we can associate with the lowly people yeah. that don't know God. You know, that's not how, how that works. You know, we're called to um, love people. But like you said, we still <clears throat> remain in this place where we're consecrated or given to him. But in so doing, we're effective in the world around us. We're yeah. fragrance. You know what I'm saying? Nobody sprays perfume and sit at the house. You know, you spray perfume and you go outside and go study. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> that's that's yeah, how you yeah, do yeah. it. You know, you you don't you don't just like write letters and keep it to yourself. You gotta, you know, um, share with others. You gonna tell me you're gonna start writing letters? No, no, that's not for uh, me. That's for that. someone in the other room that's, might have just heard that. That's for the other creatives. You know, it's not for me. It's not my <laughs> gifting. You know? It's not my gifting. Um, but it's <clears throat> but it, it's it's a. Um, yeah, I mean, you're, you're, we are a person. Like, we came to the Lord because some God used somebody to speak to us. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. in the same kind of way, that's how it goes. There's there's a sowing, there's the watering. Mm-hmm. God is bringing the increase. You know, we can't do that in a place that's already been sold in. You can only sow in bare ground. You know, you got to go somewhere else, start sowing in water. You know, so we just have to be mindful to, um, you know, it's not like, Man, I just got saved. God sent all the Christians to one island. Let us stay here before you're coming, and then we leave. No, that's that kind of defeats the point of the Great Commission, as you yeah. mentioned. Um, and I think one way we can truly, um, <clears throat> and I think Jesus said it best when he uses the example of loving people. If you only love those that love you back, what credit do you have? Yeah. Right? What better way to love people than those that actually don't like you very much? You know what I'm saying? And typically, your friends like you, your family likes you. But when you're around people that, you know, don't like you or love you, that's really when love is shown. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I'm nice to you, I can't really I can't really say that I'm nice because it's easy to be nice to you guys. Yes, right. But if I'm nice to somebody who's not doing me good, then it mm-hmm. shows a different um, different character. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, so we, for us to really see... Some of these things we have to be around people that um, may I hate your God or mm-hmm. I hate you Christians. I hate what you guys stand for. You guys only judge us. You only do X, Y, and Z. Mm-hmm. And the Lord is going to place you in that place where, yeah, this is a good place to shine. You know, it's a good place to be a light and things like that. So, yeah, let's let's not get in this weird thing where we get saved and then we run away. Mm-hmm. And we get secluded. Um, we don't want to be contaminated, you know, from the world. So that's, Yeah. Because especially in Texas, it can be so easy for Christians to only be friends with other Christian people. Oh, yeah. For sure. oh yeah. It is, for sure. but, mm-hmm. It's easy to get sucked into it, you know, because you kind of get comfortable mm-hmm. yeah. in that way. And everything might be good. Like, it's great. But then also it's like it, it, it could cause you to look at people a certain way. Yeah. Um, through Not through a lens of love, but through a lens of, you know, something else. And so it's like when you say about the love, I'm like, man, like if I'm if I'm sitting next to somebody that hates me, I, I think about love is patient, love is kind. I have to really actually right. <laughs> like do those things at this yeah. moment because you ain't really kind to me right now. Right, right, right. You probably don't like me, but I know that, um, that but if I know God to be true, I know that Jesus died on the cross for for me and for you, then I know like he cares that much for you as much as he cares as much for me. Like I, I happen to be the one that got saved and I want you to experience what I want what mm-hmm. I experience myself. And so that's just it, you know, that we get that privilege to do that. And mm-hmm. um Yeah, man. Josue, any last things? No, I mean I think <clears throat> you know, after five years of trying to get you here, you know, <laughs> I <can't>. uh, <laughs> Finally able to pull it off, make it happen. You know, it was. It's a, been an honor. Yeah, it, it was. It was a good time. You know, I enjoyed the. Um, I enjoyed the conversation. You know, and I think, um, <clears throat> even just the different aspects, different parts about who you are, and and you know, getting to know you over these last uh, couple of years, however many years it's been. Mm-hmm. Um, but 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 I think in just hearing you share today, the thing that kind of came to my mind, came to my heart. Um, was just <clears throat> just the emphasis I feel like the Lord has given you to really adapt to culture, um, you know, especially like the culture of where you've been planted. Um, you've you know really done a great job of adapting to that because there's there's one way to um, <clears throat> know how involved somebody is in a culture. If I was to drop you in China today, 
Um, and I come back two years later. How would I know if you, you've you adapted to the culture? Mm -hmm. No, I'm asking a question. Like, how would I know? Oh, just by how, how I speak, how I talk, how I walk. Yeah, chopsticks. Uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> if, I mean. Hey, yo. <laughs> I mean, I know we talked about it before, but it's a true answer. I wasn't meaning it as a reference, guys. Come oh. on. <laughs> yes. no, no. Man, that, was, that was a great reference. <laughs> I'm done. That was a great reference. Goodness, but I no, can't like say if, if 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 you're dropped in the if you're dropped in a different country, yeah. I don't know about all those things you said. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think that you know where the Lord is planning, you've been able to learn and grow and um you know, you, just the way you talk about where you've been planted, um and, and, and how that's impacted your life and it's caused to impact the lives of other people as well. You know, there's been a lot of fruit in your life as a result of, you know, your obedience to um, whether it was to serve or to just come a part of something, mm -hmm. you know, really join that culture. So um, I really just felt that in my heart while you were talking earlier about like prophetic things. You know, I didn't want to cut you off, but um, it was just, you know, maybe it is that you're in a good place, you know, and, and the evidence of that can be seen. So I just want to share that with you. So, wow. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, man. Any last things for the audience from you? Uh, one thing I would say is a question that I've been, um, the Lord's been writing me recently, um, with this new, like you said, you mentioned fashion earlier and it's kind of new for me. Um, I've been walking, I think with this whole nine month thing, he's been really bringing it up in my prayer time and stuff like that. And one of the questions that my friend had asked me randomly on the, we were on the call one day, he's like, Hey Jay, like if you would remove fear from that, what would you do? And it was like a, it was a small scenario. And I was like, oh, I would do this. And he's like, all right, just do it. And I think it would just be that. Like, there, I feel like there are some things that we're called to do, we're called to walk into and to go after. And it's just a question, like, if fear was removed from it, what would you do? Write it down, say it to your friend, whatever, and then go do it, you know? And um, I just, I, I, I believe in what you guys do here. Um, it's beautiful. Uh, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this and it's such an honor. Yeah, bro. It's fun to have you on. You're a great brother. You're a great friend. Um, yeah, we wouldn't be the same without you. And yeah, man, I'm looking forward to continuing to get to know more because I feel like every every single time we talk, I feel like it's 80% of the time as you kind of like we're talking about earlier, the theme of it was like 80% of you asking me questions. And then 20% me to where I've known you for years. I'm just like, there's still so much I just don't know about this guy. Yet, he's one of my closest brothers, and I just want to continue to get to know him. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, brother. Yeah. You're one of the people that the Lord showed me that um, he's like, Chase is there for many people and be there for him. So, be the one there asking him the questions. And so, the Lord has uh, just really highlighted that for me because you are one of those people for many other people. Many other, many other people, y'all. If y'all don't know, <laughs> that man has a grace on his life. And so, um, it's an honor. It is an honor um, to know you both. Well, it's, it's beautiful to see sons of God love the Lord and like just walk it out in the best that we know and in all truth and authenticity um, to know that. We know a perfect person that will take everything that we have to offer him and make it into something beautiful. And so, yeah, yeah. yeah take that to heart for real. Yeah. So awesome, y'all. Thank you all so much for tuning in. Uh, that'll be it for us today. Uh, shout out to Thomas for producing Come on. this episode. We love you, Thomas. You're amazing. Um, all of our information will be in the description below if you want to support us. Uh, the podcast outreaches everything that we're doing. And so, Jalen, thank you again, bro. Thank you. Until next time, much love. God bless. I'm so excited that like, we switched up. Bro.